What's up, everybody? Um, got another little project going on. Thought I would try and uh, thought I'd share it with you. I'm not going to go through the whole big process because it's like everything else with home brewing. Uh, there's so much out there, and uh, some of you probably, or most of you have probably heard of this, and most of you, uh, some of you may have your own or have built your own but uh, or bought your own. But uh, if you do much brewing, you've uh, at least heard about or know about stir plates. And making yeast starters and uh, I've made a couple of yeast starters since I've started doing all grain and um, uh, I just uh, would make the starter and put it in a controlled temperature environment and shake it uh, myself um, as often as I you know walk by it or ever, as I could but uh, a stir plate would be really handy to have and um, <clears throat> they're not really expensive I think you can get them for 30 or 40 bucks on up but uh when you can build them, why not build them cheaper? So uh, I got some parts today uh, from Rad Shack, Radio Shack, and I'm uh, going to try to throw this thing together. May not get it all done tonight, but um, I'll attempt it. And uh, the guys over at Homebrew Talk, uh, this is uh, from one of the threads over there. That's where I got this idea in the parts list. So um, basically what you would need is a project box of some sort uh, that will hold big enough size to... Uh, hold everything and this one's like seven inches by five seven and a half by five somewhere like that and i'll put all the uh, parts in the more info section if you're interested uh, that way you can get them uh, i'll show this first actually a rheostat 25 ohm rheostat it'll mount in the one end of this uh, project box and then the knob will of course control the rheostat and then just a little rocker switch you can see that to turn it off and on uh, have a 12 volt uh, box fan, little brushless fan uh, that uh, some people mount them down in their box uh, on a little metal plate. Some of the boxes come with a metal plate. This one didn't. Um, I'm going to be mounting mine to the lid. And then the lid will, of course, sit down here. And, of course, it will stand off. Uh, and the purpose for this is to have magnets on this and as it turns your stir bar magnet which will sit down in your flask and your yeast starter and spin it and get a nice little vortex going and uh, make you a nice little starter there so uh, <clears throat> a lot of people uh, take washers and they'll glue them to the fan uh, I've seen people use epoxy and different other methods, glue, uh, to uh, get this thing centered, slow, slow curing epoxy, get this thing started up and then get the fan going and, and get this thing centered. And then, you know, as the epoxy sets up, it's nice and centered. And the reason for using this uh, stainless, or this, not stainless steel, but steel washer is uh, to be able to use magnets and just place them on here and bounce those magnets. Uh, and you know get your uh, stir bar going right uh, this is a magnet out of a uh, hard drive that I took out today I had a old hard drive and I took the magnet out that's what a lot of people are using and I may try that uh, I've read that, it, that it's kind of hard to get balanced and uh, I don't know if this is quite big enough a magnet it was an older hard drive but I also picked up these magnets at Radio Shack and they're ceramic magnets mag ugh, ceramic magnets I'll get it out in a minute. And I don't know if they'll be strong enough. A lot of people use rare earth magnets. They're really strong. So uh, that part won't be too big, uh, big a deal to, you know, if these magnets, magnets, I can't say magnet tonight. If those magnets don't work out, um, then, uh, you know, I, there's no big deal. I'll find the right type of magnet. And I have a stir bar uh, on the way, so a one-inch stir bar. So it'll be a few days before it gets here anyway. And I also have a wall wart. It's a... Um, I don't know where it's from. I have a box of these things, and uh, they, uh, I've seen people use anywhere from 6 to 12 volt ones. This one's a 9 volts, and of course it puts out a little more than that if I put my meter on it. <clears throat> but uh, under load, it should be around 9 volts, I'm, I'm hoping so. And uh, I think I'm going to use, uh, instead of gluing uh, my, stir uh, my washer down, I think I'm going to use Super Velcro. I love this stuff. It's real easy to work with. I'll just uh, put a piece down there and then put a piece on the back of the uh, 
washer and, and use it to move around and get it centered and I think it'll hold just fine so and then I'll put uh, spacers on here enough to be able to mount uh, with using some probably eight thirty seconds bolts whatever I can find I actually have some some bolts here I don't think they're quite long enough but uh, I've got several laying around but I, after I get everything mounted on there I'll mount it to where it's spaced enough to just uh, have that magnet maybe a quarter of an inch away from the lid there and then like I say, when I mount this down, it'll all be wired up and uh, hopefully work well. All right, folks, got the next little step done <coughs> here on the little project. And uh, uh, simple as that can be, uh, just a little soldering. I, I decided to solder my connections, and you don't have to do that if you don't have a solder gun or don't know how to solder or not comfortable soldering. You can get disconnects <coughs> and crimp onto these wires and slide them onto these posts. Uh, real easy so it's not hard at all but uh, I have a soldering iron I solder all the time at work so that's what I chose to do but ran my little power supply cable in through the corner here just drilled a hole and got it going through there just big enough tied a little knot in it so it won't pull out and you have your uh, <coughs> negative side going to the side of the rocker switch the earth with the negative side of the fan and then you have your uh, uh, load from the rocker switch one over to the center pin of the uh, rheostat and then you just have your uh, hot wire from your fan going to the other side one uh, another side of the rheostat the right side there and we've got it plugged in got it plugged in so let's see what we got here should have a little light got power fans going and It's been a few days since I uh, videoed anything on this and uh, on my stir plate, so I <clears throat> thought I would get that finished up and get it posted for you for you all to see. But uh, finally got my uh, last little part in and got this thing together and tried it out. So I wanted to take it apart a little bit and show you the process. I had to go back and look at what I videoed. I couldn't even remember it, but the last part of the video that you saw was where I put the uh, Velcro the uh, washer on top of the fan, <clears throat> got it balanced out and centered. And then I don't think I videoed anything about the magnet, but what I used was a hard drive magnet. And I'm going to set my little camera up here and, and try to show you a little more in depth. Uh, well, maybe I'll do it like this, but let's take the lid off and set it to the side. But there you see the fan with the washer mounted on it, which you've already seen. And, and this is just a little hard drive magnet. <clears throat> and I was worried that it was going to be too little and not strong enough. Um, I really don't understand. Some of these guys say they have a hard time balancing those things. And basically, I just stuck it in there. What I thought was pretty much centered. You can tell the way it's curved. It's kind of odd, oddball. But the uh, end result was good. And I'll show you that here in a minute. Um, I had scored these uh, from work. And they're earth, magnet, earth magnets. There are four of them. And they are super duper strong. Not just strong, but super duper strong. But, I was going to end up maybe using the, uh, one of those on each side. You can see how strong they are. They moved that. But one on each side, and uh, if the hard drive magnet didn't work, but I believe it's going to work. So basically, what I do from here, uh, and like I say, some people mount their fan to the bottom, or they have a little metal plate that goes in the bottom. I think the some of the project boxes come with a little metal plate. And then they'll use spacers to raise this uh, fan up as far as it needs to be from the top of the... Uh, or the bottom of the lid and I went to opposite I mounted my fan to the bottom of the lid you can tell that I've got uh, four long screws of course the screws I brought home weren't long enough but I've got I happen to have four here with some nuts would work and for spacers as you can see I've got one nut on there that's too big that I just slid up on there and also on each uh, bolt I use a uh, rubber grommet so all four of those go on there around the edges and then <coughs> the fan will mount to that and uh, I'll just go ahead and mount that up and, and show you what it looks like finished up okay I've got the uh, <coughs> four bolts down through the lid and through the corners of the fan which I had to drill out just a little bit and hopefully you can see that you can see that I have a nut and a rubber grommet using the spacers up against it and I think I'm leaving about three-eighths of an inch between the uh, edge of the fan and the 
and the bottom of the lid there. Time I get done, getting, I use those four nuts there to put on the bottom and uh, tighten them down just enough to make it snug. And uh, then I'll show you some more. What we've got here. Oh, and I'll go ahead and plug it in. Uh, here's what I was waiting on my uh, stir bar, uh, one inch stir bar. There's like three bucks on eBay, so you can get them different places. I think most of the online stores are a little bit higher, but I found this guy selling these for like three bucks, three and a half bucks with a dollar shipping or something. So, and of course they're making them in different sizes. And if you depend on your size of your starter, uh, I'm doing one liter starters, so um, uh, I can always get a two inch bar, a bigger bar if I want to do bigger starters. I think, but you can see how it goes right to the magnet and. Uh, I just happen to have a big old four cup of uh, water in my uh, little measuring cup here. And if I ain't mistaken, if I remember right, four ounces, a little over four ounces is, a, or four, I'm sorry, a little over four cups is a liter. So uh, drop that thing in there. And of course, the point is to stir that thing and keep your starter going and to form a, you want your magnet. Uh, and you want everything synchronized enough to where you have a nice vortex when this thing starts spinning down. And you want your vortex to go all the way to the bottom to keep any yeast from settling and to keep oxygen going in that bad boy. So plugged in and turn her on and see what happens. And you see the vortex come up. And it does go all the way to the bottom. Uh, I haven't run it for any amount of time, but uh, and that's on the lowest setting. That's what I'm saying. So I may go down to a six volt uh, wall wart to see if it uh, come down anymore. Which actually, I guess that's pretty good. I guess that's what I want right there. And I can turn it on up. I've not cranked it up any to see if it throws that thing, but I really don't need to go any higher than what it what it is on the low. So. Turn it down, back down. That was turned up a little bit, but uh, yeah, that's kicking on pretty good. So I'm I'm pleased with that. And uh, I don't know what I'll use. Uh, I don't think I'll get a flask. I don't know. They uh, they're kind of pricey. Uh, I'll probably get a two liter flask. Uh, I, I like I say they're pricey, and I've seen people again use like flower vases, uh, like from Walmart for three dollars. So. You know, that unless you want the markings on the side of it, but you can always mark it yourself and uh, and know what your uh, you know what your measurements are for whatever you use. So some people use growlers. I, I do have a half gallon a half gallon growler that I do use for my starters, and I've not tried it because I didn't get this thing assembled and tested before I just did my last batch of beer. I uh, brewed it uh, yesterday, and the starter was done like Wednesday, so I didn't really have this completed to try it on this starter. So. I'll be anxious to try it, hopefully, this upcoming week on a, on a real starter. There you go, Jake's do-it-yourself stir plate. Uh, and like I say, they online, you see them for about 40 or 50 bucks, 60 bucks on up. And I think this one would do a 2-liter starter uh, pretty easy, too. So I'll show it in action maybe uh, this coming week when I get a actual starter going. And I should be able to sit that bad boy in there in my fermentation fermenter, you know, fermentation chamber, whatever you want to call it, chest freezer that I use to ferment my beer. That's usually where I keep my starters at to keep everything at the same temperature. So there you go. I'll uh, I'll put the uh, parts list in the in the more info section. Uh, all of it came from Radio Shack and uh, simple stuff. If you got any questions, feel free to ask comments. Lay them on me.